Hallelujah. Yeah, DT, we love to praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. I got it. Sister Joy wants me to take this jacket off so I can show some solidarity. We have our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Hallelujah. Yeah. We know him as a way maker. Yes, he is. Miracle worker and a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Yes. And then we have protection. Yes. We have deflection. Yes. We have correction. Yes. And we have inspection. Yes. For he is the resurrection. Yes. And in him, we should see our reflection. Yes. Yes. Amen. Do I need to say that again? I'm not going to say that again. <laughs> Yeah. 
who you are, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. The real maker. That is who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for this time. Thank God for his blessings. I'm honored to be before you this morning. If you can kindly stand while we read the word of God. Thank you so much. Please turn to Joshua chapter 7. Verse 10 to 15, but I'm going to go to read verse 10. The Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant. All right. And I commended them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and lied and put them among their own belongings. Father, I just thank you this morning, Jesus. I decrease your God and you increase. I thank you for your people here, God. I know you got a message for someone. And for every one of us, O Lord, Father, may we be blessed. May your word, O God, convict us. May it direct us. May it bring us into your truth. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Thank you so much. Um, thank God for his grace. Thank God for his blessing. I want to give one to my pastor and his wife. God bless you. Amen. We are wonderful people. Thank God for them. Amen. Also want to thank God for our assistant pastor and his wife. Amen. Recognize them this morning. Also want to thank God for my own family, my wife and my kids. Amen. My support. They are so great. And I want to thank God for every one of you here this morning who took your time to be here to listen to the word of God. Today, I want to draw your attention to Joshua chapter 7, verse 10 to 15. And the subject that we're going to be dealing with, the consequences of disobedience. I was sitting here this morning and I listened to Brother Frankie just go over everything I've been thinking of in our Bible class. Yeah. And that was so awesome because it's just that confirmation yeah. of what God wants us to hear this morning. Yeah. Thank God for that. J.C. Wright in his book, Holiness, mentioned that sin is a disease that pervades and runs through every part of our moral constitution. And every faculty of our mind. The understanding, the affection, the reasoning powers, and the will are all more or less affected. Even the conscience is so blinded that it is as likely to lead people wrong as right. All right. Unless the whole spirit enlightens the mind. In other words, sin is part of who we are since Genesis chapter 2. That's right, that's right. Since the fall of man, sin has been part of our being. Yes. From the day we were born up to now, sin, that nature, which is the flesh, is part of us. Even though being saved in Christ and having the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean that our flesh is gone. We still struggle, we still deal with things, we still got problems in our lives. And that's a fight that we all go through. Yes, yes, yes. 
So we got to understand that except the power of the Holy Spirit comes in and take control, we cannot be the way God wants us to be. But we got to understand that sin has a consequence. Yes. yes, it does. And for every decision we make, we got to think about the action, the consequences that follow that decision. Yes, yes, right. We got to think about how it's going really to affect us. Not just us, but those that we are having a relationship with. So one thing about sin is that it's very selfish. It puts you in a position to think about only yourself. It does not bring to mind those people that are going to be affected. It does not bring to mind people, your children, a relationship, even your church. So in that moment in time, it's really about you. What's going to benefit you? So in today's lesson, we understand that God has given Asia victory over Jericho. Yes, he did. But before going into Jericho, God told Asia, I'm commanding you, Joshua, as a leader, to tell the people, do not take anything as a personal item for in that city. That's right. So many times the word of God speaks to us. God gives us instruction as for a specific thing in our life that God does not like. And he does not want us to get involved with. But sometimes we overlook that, take God's word for granted, and act on our own understanding. Because the Bible says that lean down on your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge the Lord and He will direct your path. But because we feel sometimes that we can go without following God's instruction, at that moment we want to make our decision and not God's instruction. So God instructed Joshua and said, Tell Israel. That everything will be not saying except for the silver and gold that's supposed to be brought into God's house. Everything else needs to be burned with the same. The question we need to ask is why God was giving Asia that instruction. I know all of the beautiful things, the cars, the houses, the everything you think about. Why God would want to destroy them? God sees what do we do. And he knows that those things are a curse. Yes. Yes. And they got bad influence if we take the wrong steps. So God told Joshua, Asia should avoid them. How does God tell us to avoid things in our society today? Why does God want us to not get involved? With? Why are those things that God wants us to get rid of? To distance ourselves from them, people, relationship, material possession, things that will control us. But to understand the consequences of sin, we gotta understand the goal of sin. Sin is not just sin, it has a goal. And when we lack the understanding of the goal of sin, we reap the consequences of sin after That's right. in our lives. Right. So when we turn to St. John chapter 8, Jesus said this about sin. First John 4, Jesus said this. Jesus answered them, Surely, and truly, I say to you, Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Right. Right. You see, sin does not just want you to commit that sin for that moment. It wants to trick you, buy you, lock you up, and take charge 
of your life. So Jesus says that the practice of sin makes you slave to sin. Did I say one time? A habit of sin. Yes, yes, yes. Makes you slave to sin. Not only that, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 to 8, the Bible tells us this. John says that whoever practices sin, not of God. Making a habit of sin, it distances you from God. You do not bear the characteristics of God. Right, right. So he says this in verse 3, in chapter 3, verse 8. 4 to 8, he says this. Everyone who makes a practice of sin also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Never true. Let no one deceive you. Whoever practices sin is of the devil. All right. All right. So it means that sin is a practice. You start lying one time, you're going to start going to your life. You start stealing one time, you're going to keep stealing. Right. You start committing adultery one time, you're going to keep committing adultery. Yeah, yeah. So sin becomes a habit. And the consequences of that action is that it breaks you separation from God. Yes, it does. So God told Joshua, I know I'm saying, avoid. Also, we've got to understand that sin. Involves a process. Yes, it does. We cannot just make sin, we cannot just add a sin one time. We gotta think about it, right? We gotta go over it in our mind and say, Is it good? Is it really good? You are doing it, you are adding it. So when we look at James chapter 1, verse 13 to 15, it says this. It says that. Let no one say when he is tempted and being tempted by God. That's right. For God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one. That's right. But each person is tempted when he is lured and entitled by his own desire. The desire when he has conceived gave birth to sin. And sin, when it's for the grown, brings for death. So sin is a process. So God saw all of those things and said, Tell Asia to turn away from it. That's right, that's right. Tell Asia to avoid it. So sin just don't appear as sin. It comes as temptation. We first get tempted to act. And then we think about it. We think about it. And then it plays on our mind. And then we keep it to ourselves. We conceive it within us. And then we act upon what we want to do. Then after acting upon it, it brings death to us. It brings death to our relationship with God. It separates us from God. Amen. Amen. So we gotta think about the process of sin. We gotta think about the consequences of sin. We gotta think about the goal of sin. So in our text today, God told Israel, He said, You need to avoid to achieve. You need to stay away. What is God telling you today to do? What God wants you to avoid in our culture today. Look at the society in which we live in. See, the lack of fear for God. 
See how people curse the name of God. See how people talk about God with no regard for who he is. But angel over you, the harmful effect of sin. There are two things that I want to bring up first before I go forward. First, we have to understand failing to obey or listen to God's instruction will lead to rebellion against God. When we fail to listen, when we fail to take in the word of God, when we fail to heed to the warnings of God's word, it leads to rebellion against God. And God said, rebellion is equal to witchcraft. That's his word. So the question here is, we need to ask ourselves, why am I doing that because I'm people? What is in my life that God keeps talking about that I don't want to get rid of? Why am I still holding on to that God keeps dealing with me about this? And I'm not finding any victory. I'm not getting any win over it. How does God want us to know? So we need to have four things. It's like it's like this. Alcohol, drugs, and addiction. The first time you come, it's like all of you running through, you enjoy, you don't see that you want to drag you and lead you to the place where you're fed and everybody wanna look at you different. That's a key away from it. Is a eight. Not only that, the second thing here is complacency in our relationship with God opens the door for sin. Yes. When we are too complacent in how we view God, when we are too complacent how we take God to be. When we are too complacent with our worship yes. and time with God, Bible study, reading of God's word, it opens the door for sin. Yes, yes it does. So, Asia just won a battle over Jericho, and God gave them instructions before going in, right? But here it says, go into the next battle, and Asia did not put some down. They felt that they had a victory. There were big people who were going to overcome the rest of the nation. But something happened that Asia did not notice. The enemy has used somebody in your camp to disturb them. Because they were complacent in the deal of God. So the Bible says that. Joshua told Israel, go and check on Ahab. And when he sent his messengers, he came back and said, Yeah, we're good. We don't need to carry more people. We can march that ourselves. We need 2,000 people to go and defeat their very little people. When we are too complacent, we apply ourselves to God's wisdom. When we are too complacent, we close the door that God is supposed to open in our lives. Yes, yes, yes. It was playing. They were playing. So they thought that they had confidence in themselves and they went against Ahab. But it never dealt with the issue of sin. They never noticed. That the enemy was a man down. But it went on to win a victory. How many times that because of sin in our life, we fail to win the battle that God wants us to win? Right. How many times that we feel so defeated, overwhelmed by the enemy? How many times that we cannot even battle those little things in our lives? Because our prayer life is so weak. Our time of God is limited. All right. And we 
cannot even tell others about God. So what happened? You know what you think that? Yes, yes. They ran like a little baby. Yes. They went crying. What happened? Why are we defeated? I thought I had everything together. I thought I had my plans. I thought everything was falling into place for me. Why am I cast down? Why am I defeated like this? And in verse 10, God says to Joshua, get up. So God is saying to you this morning, get up. It's time that you get up. Something's going on. You need to get up. You need to wake up. He says, why have you fallen? Why have your face fallen? Is your sin. He said the reason that you are defeated is because anger sin against me. All right. What did I say? The reason you're not winning the battles, the reason you're still struggling, the reason there is repeated, repeated sin is because you're not recognizing it. It's because you are not recognized it yet. All right. He says, Therefore, in verse 4, the people of Asia cannot stand before the enemies. The consequences of sin is the fact that you will not be able to stand up against the enemy because he has a hope in your life. When sin is controlling you, when you are under the grip of sin, you are powerless. You are powerless. Yeah, yeah. The Holy Spirit does not have effect in your life because you are still giving yourself over to something apart from God. Yeah. So God said, "Is your sin? Yeah. Is your sin?" And God was not taking that sin lightly because they disobeyed God. Yes, it did. Oh, thank God for His mercy in Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that we can go to the tomb of grace in time of need. And we have an intercessor that will intercede for us. And we thank God for the curse of Jesus that I can go through Jesus to God. Amen. Amen. God said, it's your sin. It's your sin. He says, so they can stand before God. Are you recognizing what is in your life? Are you recognizing what bothers you a lot that your poor life is so weak? That you cannot see the vision that God wants to win? He goes to He says this. Get up. Consecrate your people and say, consecrate yourself for tomorrow. For thou is the Lord of the God of Asia. There are defeated things in your midst. God said the way forward is to separate yourself first of all. And then recognize what is in your midst. All right. Set yourself apart. Recognize your struggle. Admit to the fact that I need help. Admit to the fact that I need help. I need help. So look before I conclude. So God told him to say, separate yourself. He said, you cannot stand before your enemy as long as you have sin in your life. As long as, as you still dragging onto that battle. As long as you still dragging onto that See, he said, There will be no victory for you. So, you see, another consequence of sin it deprives of the victory in God, it deprives of the 
Fait ton nous avons bien complété, il t'attend moins ce qu'on va nous faire. Yeah, yeah. So what can we do? The question we need to ask, what can I do? How can I do it? First thing is repentance. Repentance requires turning away from it. Bible says in Joel chapter 2, he says, break your heart and not your garment. You know what God was saying? I don't want false repentance. I don't want baby cry. I don't want anything that you feel in emotions that at the end of the day you go back to doing the same old thing. He said, repentance starts from the heart. True repentance comes from the heart. If not, it's not repentance. So God told him, he said, concentrate yourself, separate yourself, get ready, you're going to face this issue. So God said, we're going to face the issue together. Secondly, what we need to do is to concentrate ourselves to put on and God's word. Yes. It means that I need to redirect my focus on God's word. Yes, yes, yes. Psalm 119 says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God. Yes. So the word of God has the propensity, it has the power to please us. Yes, it does. Jesus said that the word that has spoken in our life and spirit. So the word of God carries the spirit of God to bring transformation into our lives. Paul said, We can do that transform by the word of God. Separate yeah. yourself yeah. to pearl and the word of God. The third thing is identify the problem, root it out from the life. Israel, how do you identify the problem? God will use Israel to identify the problem. Israel will never win another battle. A battle identifying the problem. You have to recognize the problem in your life. I don't need to recognize that for you. You don't need to recognize that for me. I need to come to that place. And say that I got problem. Yes. And this problem is this thing. You gotta call it by name. You gotta admit that this is my problem. Yes. So Dr. Abraham said, in the morning, bring all the people outside. This is what we need to do. He said, you gotta bring them. And then you will know who it is. And it's not that we need to draw back. We need to concentrate, we need to draw back and reflect on what is in my life. How do I come with it? How do I bring that to God? So God was on Monday that morning and said, I'm going to be there because we're going to do this together. God wants to work with you, He's not against you, He's for you. So the only way that you can identify the problem is to work with God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's work with God. Yeah. Lastly, this is the basic one. Prepare to trust God for victory. Amen. So with all of these consequences, God was so willing to give victory to Israel. Yes, yeah. So if you look at chapter 8, Verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear, and do not be dismayed. Take all the fighting men with you, and arise, go up to Ahab. See, I have given it into your hand. Give me the king of Ahab. How did they come back? They had to deal with the problem. But the effect of sin was upon them. They grieve about it. They saw themselves defeated and down. Sick problem is that it does not want you to recognize it. That's right. As long as they can blind you, 
As long as they can cover your eyes to not recognize it, you're going to be in a chain forever. And the consequences of that is the lack of war, the lack of love for God, the lack of compassion for others. And you are better by yourself, excluding yourself from people, because that's what the devil wants for you. That's right, that's right. As I close, see how it comes from. But it left for us to admit and recognize it. 